ChatGPT is currently changing the world unlike any other technology. And with that change, we have a lot of opportunities. In this video, I will speak about how you can use OpenAI's ChatGPT for SEO applications. I will give you 5 ChatGPT SEO use cases and based on that, you can start using this tool. So to start this video, the first thing I need to tell you is how you can use ChatGPT professionally. Stop prompting random words to it. I know it is quite intelligent and it understands you, but most of y'all need to get better at prompting ChatGPT. If you log into ChatGPT, you'll see an interface similar to this. You have a chat box at the bottom and a send button at the right. If you want to ask it something, you will need to type the question and click send after which ChatGPT will generate an answer. This is all good, but remember, ChatGPT is not a person. ChatGPT is based on generative AI. This means that behind this website is still an algorithm that works on zeros and ones. So if you are a pro user like me, you can use even this simple interface to get a lot of customization options. Now in this video, I will share one such strategy which you can use to make yourself a better user. Just remember to put three points in the first message. Now what exactly are those three points? Number one, define your problem. You see, ChatGPT was trained on a lot of data. It has read through research papers, novels, Twitter feeds, news articles, poems, etc. Now, if you ask it to generate some content, which one of these should it refer to? Should ChatGPT refer to blogs, news articles, novels, movies? You should specify what exactly your problem is and help ChatGPT understand it. The second point is define your contribution. What will you provide ChatGPT? Whatever task you provide ChatGPT, you will also need to provide some input. What is this input going to be? Is it a file name, URL, stories, videos? What exactly are you going to provide ChatGPT? This is something that you should mention. Number three is defining your expectation. What exactly are your expectations from ChatGPT? What do you want ChatGPT to do? And what should the result be? Do you want it to write code, create content, provide advice? What will the result be? Now I will show you how this works through my examples. That way you can understand it more clearly. Okay. As I mentioned before, this video will give you five examples or use cases of ChatGPT in SEO. Number one is keyword research. Number two is keyword intent. Number three is keyword clustering. The first three points are based on keyword analytics, which is usually done through paid apps. But with ChatGPT, you can get it done easily for free. Following this is number four, which is meta title or description. And lastly, number five is schema data, which is kind of a technical process with a lot of options. But with ChatGPT, you'll be able to do it easily. So with these five use cases, we can optimize the delivery of your content and not get punished by Google for posting good content. It will make our results much more unique and interesting and they won't be generic or boring. So let's start with the first use case, which is keyword research. So to start with the first use case, which is keyword research, let me open ChatGPT interface and then I'll give my prompt in the three steps that we discussed. I'll start by writing, act as a keyword research tool. This tells ChatGPT that it needs to start behaving like a keyword research tool. So the first point in our requirement is conveyed over here. The second line is, I will give you a seed keyword. This is my contribution. I will provide ChatGPT with the main or seed keyword. The third line is, you will provide me with the following. With this sentence, I can ask ChatGPT to perform multiple actions based on multiple instructions. The first instruction that I'm going to give it is to generate a list of 10 long tailed keywords based on this keyword. The second instruction is to generate a list of 10 keywords based on the keywords generated during step one with the geographical modifier near the city. The list of cities are given below Austin, Chicago and San Francisco. So over here, I'm giving clear instructions on how I want ChatGPT to behave and what results I expect. Once I send this prompt, you can see over here that ChatGPT has given me the confirmation. So now I'm going to proceed and enter the seed keyword, which is data analyst. Now that the seed keyword is provided, the first thing I get is a list of 10 long tailed keywords. 
You can see that the list contains data analyst job description, data analyst skills, data analyst salary, data analyst interview questions, data analyst certifications, etc. And the second part contains the list of keywords with the geographical modifier near this city. So now our keywords are customized to locations. You have data analyst jobs near Austin, data analyst salary in Austin, data analyst training courses in Chicago, data analyst career path in San Francisco, etc. ChatGPT is a really good tool for keyword research and to also customize keywords. You don't need any paid software, Excel sheets, formulas, etc. ChatGPT can do this directly for you. Now let's head to the second part which is keyword intent. We have already seen how keyword research can be conducted. But what if instead of directly generating keywords, you want to classify them into multiple categories based on intent. Like commercial intent, informational intent, etc. This is where keyword intent comes into the picture. This process can be done using other tools, but most of them are paid. You don't really have a good free tool that you can use. So I'm using ChatGPT for this process and the query of intent research can be done as follows. Act as a keyword research tool. I have set the role right now and after this I'll say, I will provide a list of keywords. If there is a keyword that is not related to data analyst or data scientist, please remove them. So this is a practical example where we are filtering out unwanted keywords from our list and these keywords are the keywords that we don't want to use. After this, we have another instruction. You will categorize them based on these three following categories based on their intent. First is commercial, second is navigational and then informational. This will categorize your keywords into their respective groups based on the intent of the keyword. Commercial keywords will be categorized as commercial, navigational keywords will be put into navigational and so on. ChatGPT is again confirming that it is ready for the task and now I am inserting a list of keywords. This list is very simple. I have copy pasted some keywords from Google and I am trying to categorize these keywords right now. As soon as I paste the input and click on enter, you can see that ChatGPT has already started classifying the keywords based on the categories I provided. So first we get the commercial keywords like Google Data Analytics Certification, Metabo Analyst, Coursera Data Analyst, Coursera Google Data Analytics, Indeed Data Analyst, blah blah blah. And the second one is navigational keywords like Data Analyst, Certified Data Analyst, Business Intelligence Analyst, etc. And the last one is informational like data analytics is, data analyst excel, data analyst projects, etc. Up until now, we have seen how to generate keywords, keyword intent, cleaning or filtering of the data, etc. Now let's see how we can perform keyword clustering. Keyword clustering is an important concept using which we can improve our pages, the quality of the pages, optimizations, etc. You can see people using it when they want to target many small keywords through a single post or when making silo pages. So the prompt we're going to use for keyword clustering is going to look something like this. The first line is act as a keyword clustering tool. Next, I will provide a list of keywords. You will need to analyze them and cluster them in relevant groups. So now if I give ChatGPT a list of keywords, it will classify them based on which group they will fit into. Once we click enter and ChatGPT gives me the confirmation, I will paste the list of keywords. This is again the same list of keywords that I used in the previous example. Now let's see how ChatGPT will categorize them. First up the category given is data analyst certification and in this we have keywords like certified data analyst, Google data analytics certification, Google data analyst, etc. Next we can see data analyst skills where we have data analyst excel, statistics for data analytics, python for data analytics, etc. We have business intelligence and analytics like business intelligence analyst, big data analyst, healthcare data analyst, etc. And the list continues on. ChatGPT is a language based model that was trained on a lot of data. So ChatGPT understands what you are writing and this is what makes this tool so powerful. So the next use case that we are going to see is meta title or description. 
For this, I will use the same type of prompts that I used before. So the first line is act as a SEO content writer. And then I will provide articles on several subjects. You have to provide four to seven words long meta titles for them. And ChatGPT has told you that it has understood your query, it has understood your prompt, and it is ready to accept articles. So I copy pasted some random article from Google over here. And once I click on enter, again you can see that ChatGPT has given you a meta title saying St. Omer opens Kotim International Film Festival. This is exactly seven words long and it has followed all the rules that we had set. This is exactly the output that was needed. And if I want to generate a meta title for another article, I can still continue just pasting articles and it will keep generating meta titles. So now let's see how we can do the same thing for meta description. The prompt is pretty much the same as before where I have said act as an SEO content writer and I will provide articles on several subjects. The last line changes, which is the result that we expect. You have to provide two to three sentences long meta description for them. And ChatGPT again confirms that it has understood our query and it knows what we are trying to get from it. So now I will paste the same article that I pasted before and you can see that ChatGPT has given a meta description for it. This meta description again is three sentences long and it has followed the regulations that we set. If you want a shorter meta description, you need to mention it again in the query. This is all I have to say about meta description and now let's move on to the last use case that we are going to discuss, which is schema data. You have many different types of schema data that you can generate, but one of the more technical and time consuming types of schema data is product schema. This is something I'll show how you can do over here. Product schema has a lot of options and a lot of technical details that usually ends up being a bit techy. You get a lot of plugins that you can use, which can automate this process for you. And this can be put in size like WordPress. But if for some reason you don't use WordPress or you have your own website, then you can use ChatGPT to generate the schema. The prompt for this is again put in three lines and the first line is act as a JSON LD expert coder. Over here I've set the role as someone who can understand the JSON LD language. After that, I have told ChatGPT what I will be providing it. I will give you product pages. Now, what do I expect from ChatGPT? You have to give me product type schema data code in JSON LD format, which is accepted by Google. This means that the result that we get will be in JSON LD format and can be directly compiled. And you can see over here that ChatGPT has understood our prompt and is waiting for us to provide the URL of the web pages. Now I need to provide it a URL. So I have taken a URL from Amazon and it is the URL of a refrigerator. For that reason, I have typed this is a refrigerator and then I have pasted the URL. And now you can see that ChatGPT has provided me the JSON LD schema data code for my refrigerator. You can see that it has included a lot of details and if you had to do it manually by hand, it would take a lot of time. This is how you can use ChatGPT for generating schema data. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you found this video informational and useful. If you think that we have missed out on any use case or you have a better suggestion, then I highly recommend that you share it in the comment section down below. So I will see you again in another Edureka video and until then, happy learning.